Today, we'll be taking a look at the burner electrode on this Whirlpool gas range. Be sure to visit appliancevideo.com where you will find thousands of repair videos on the latest technology. And for a limited time, you can save big on an annual membership and take advantage of all of our premium benefits. Appliancevideo.com. Do it right the first time. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the gas. You will need the following tools to complete this repair. To begin, we'll start by removing the grates. One side just lifts straight up. The other one has some teeth, so it wouldn't have lifted up first, but now you can lift that one up and set it to the side. Next, we'll need to remove all the burners and caps. I recommend just pulling them off as one unit and setting them to the side and try to put them in order. Next, we need to remove these 10 screws that are holding on the top. Take out the last one here and set them to the side. Next, to lift up and remove your cooktop, there are two locking tabs underneath. They are approximately three or four inches between. You'll use a putty knife to press in and separate it here. Then we we'll want to lift up and press your burners down while we're lifting up. Go underneath and remove the wire from the strain reliever on the left hand side here. Then let's push our wires through. We're going to put a towel on here, lift up and out on the cooktop, then let's swing it around and sit it on its side here. Now on the back side we have one quarter inch screw that is holding on this ground strap. We'll take this off. Remove the screw, lift up, remove your cooktop, and set it to the side. Now that we have the top removed, we have clear access to the burner electrode. Now, the main reason why you need to access this component would be if your burner is not lighting. Now, in order to test it first, we're going to focus on this left rear one, and you'll want to pull on the wire to see which one it is going into the spark module. Once you have it identified, go ahead and disconnect it, pull it through the back, and now you can test it. In order to test it, you use a meter, go between this terminal in here and the top of the electrode, and test for continuity. If it is open, it will need to be replaced. Now also, if the tip is damaged and filed down, it will also need to be replaced. In order to do so, what we'll do is pull out on this locking pin, we'll go ahead and set it down, lift up on the electrode until the wire can slide through the side, pull it out, and set it to the side. When installing your new electrode, we'll start by sliding the wire portion in. Once we have it in place, slide it down. You want it to go all the way down, and then we'll use this horseshoe, slide it on here to clip it in place. Then let's slide our wire through the back hole. You should see it feed up here, bring it around reinstall it onto your spark module. Now we can reinstall the top. When reinstalling our cooktop, first we're going to lay a rag on the side again. Grab your nut driver and quarter inch ground screw, put it through the strap here and reinstall it on the back. And then once we get it somewhat tight, you're going to want to bring it down so the strap points down. Then 
We are going to swivel it around. Let's remove our rag. And then before we do anything, let's look underneath and reinstall the wiring through the strain reliever on the side. Now, when you are reinstalling your cooktop on here, it can be rather difficult. You'll want to start with the back going straight even on both sides and then start to bring it in and it will start to kind of swivel down. Now, while it's swiveling down, you'll want to adjust all of your surface burners, igniters, so that they do not get crushed. And then eventually, you'll get it into the right spot where you can clip it down. Now, we can reinstall the screws. When reinstalling your screws, we're gonna lay them all down here. And we're gonna start with the hand screwdriver so that we do not strip anything out. And when you're doing this, make sure you pull up on the burner and just gently put the screw inside. If they are stiff, make sure you do it with your hand screwdriver instead of putting your drill on there to avoid stripping it. This one's a little stiff, so I'm gonna finish it all the way down. And now that we have all of the screws threaded, let's go ahead and get our drill, put it on a low torque and tighten them up. Now we can reinstall the caps and grates. When reinstalling your burners, of course we have a small burner on the top right, large burner on the bottom right, the middle burner, and make sure you do not damage the spark electrodes when you are installing your burners. The left bottom, we have one of the large burners, and of course a medium burner on the left back. Now we can reinstall the grates. When reinstalling your grates, we will put the side down with the teeth first. Get it lined up so that those are going up. Bring the other one down to lock it in place. And this will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like and subscribe to our channel.